I'm going to talk about handling guns virtually, including aiming, shooting, reloading, and holstering weapons. I can't cover every game that involves shooting guns, because otherwise we'd be here all bloody day. I'm just going to cover some of the most popular ones, and the less popular ones that I think are doing something more interesting. The first thing you do when you get a gun in your hand is shoot it, so let's start with that. You've got two main types, you've got one-handed, like pistols and revolvers, and two-handed, like machine guns and sniper rifles. One-handed weapons feel the most natural to use, because they mimic how you would hold the real-life counterpart. This is why Half-Life Alex only has one-handed weapons. If we look at pistols specifically, you can usually hold them one-handed, or bring your second hand over to stabilise your aim and reduce recoil with some games. Let's compare some games and see how they handle recoil, if they have any recoil at all. Half-Life Alex has zero recoil one-handed, or two with the pistol. But you do get some spread when using the SMG one-handed, but no recoil when using it two-handed. Onward has recoil one-handed when firing quickly. You can see the aim goes straight up. Two-handed, there is no recoil. This is similar for the assault rifle, with the aim going straight up one-handed, although it takes a while for the gun to lower back down again. And you've got some light spread, but still very manageable two-handed. Pavlov has some light spread one-handed and no recoil two-handed when using the pistol, but has significant kick when one-handing an assault rifle, and even two-handed still has a large amount of spray compared to onward. This can obviously be controlled by firing in short bursts, switching to single fire mode if the gun has it, or compensating for the recoil with hand movements, but I do personally find it excessive. Contractors has some kick one-handed with a pistol, and virtually none two-handed. Using a carbine, the gun kicks a lot one-handed, and it still has some kick two-handed, so you are better off firing in short bursts or single fire. Population 1 doesn't have much recoil with pistols one-handed, and none two-handed. Using an SMG, you've got lots of kick one-handed, and there's a little bit of kick two-handed. You also get an aim reticle when firing from the hip. The guns are slightly more accurate when aiming down the sights, but most people seem to hip fire. Hot Dogs, Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, also known as H3VR, doesn't seem to have any recoil for pistols, and you can't actually two-hand them in this game, probably because you don't have any in-game hands. Using an assault rifle one-handed, you have a good amount of kick, but not excessive. Two-handed is much less and more controllable. Zero Caliber has no recoil on pistols, one or two-handed. Assault rifles have lots of recoil one-handed, but much more manageable with two hands. Boneworks has got no recoil for pistols, one or two-handed, and using the carbine, you get some kick one-handed, but much less two-handed. One thing I don't like about the way the recoil works with Boneworks is how the gun moves. You can see here the sights of the gun move around, which makes it difficult to see where you're aiming. Pistols feel a lot better. There's also no way to single fire in any of the guns. Out of the games listed, I like Zero Caliber and Contractor's recoil systems. The guns have some kick, but it's very manageable. I find Pavlov's to be on the excessive side of things personally, but having guns kick when you use them in full auto gives each gun its own character, with different guns having different levels of recoil, and also makes them feel more powerful. Something else that can affect how powerful guns feel is the time to kill. This is the amount of shots it takes to kill an enemy. Half-Life Alex has a pretty high time to kill, with pistols taking 5 shots to kill the normal combine, regardless of if you hit them in the head or body. This was done by design to make the gunfights last longer. Bungie discovered through playtesting when making Halo, that when they had people play against the same enemies with the same AI, but just having one set with low health and the other having higher health, the player perceived the enemies to have been more intelligent, as the higher time to kill gives enemies more time to react, take cover and flank the player. There's actually a custom level for Half-Life Alex called Hotline Miami, and this has its own low health mode. You have low health, and so do the enemies, and it really shows how slow the AI are to react to you, as they die with one shot with a pistol, and you end up killing them before they even have a chance to pull up the gun. Onward has the lowest time to kill, with the pistol only taking four shots to the chest, and an assault rifle taking two shots. One thing I have to mention here is the stupid vignette they have added when you're getting shot. It used to be much more subtle as shown here, but now it's much more noticeable after they downgraded it, porting the game to the quest. Pavlov has a high time to kill, with both the pistol and using an assault rifle it takes 5 shots to the body with no armour, 8 shots if they have heavy armour. Contractors has a medium time to kill, with pistols taking 4-6 to six shots to the chest depending on if the enemy has armour, but headshots are generally one shot kill. Using the carbine again, you're looking at 3-4 to four shots again depending on the armour. Population 1 was difficult to get accurate numbers, because of all the types of guns with purple, gold etc. And you've also got the shield system, but it's definitely the highest out of this lot. 
Enemies are real bullet sponges. The developer of H3VR is obviously a hot doggist, as he wants you to slaughter chunks of meat. The Meaty Boys as well, taking a good 8 shots to the body with a pistol, and about 5 with an assault rifle, and that's without wearing armour. It's possible to configure them to have more or less health though. Zero Calibre has a similar time to kill as Onward, with around 5 shots with the pistol, and 2 to 3 with an assault rifle. Boneworks is 5 shots to the chest with a pistol, and 2 to the head, 4 with the carbine, and 1 to the head. When it comes to time to kill, it all depends on what the game and the developer want to achieve. With something fast paced like Pistol Whip, most of the enemies die with one shot, but that suits the nature of the game as you're killing lots of enemies in a short space of time. Having a longer time to kill like Half-Life Alex keeps you in the fight for longer, which gives the enemies a chance to move around, flank you, and makes the gunfights feel more dynamic. The time to kill can change the way you play, like with Onward. The low time to kill forces a player to use cover communicate with your teammates and be more tactical, whereas Pavlov has a much higher time to kill which allows the players to move around freely making the gameplay much faster paced. For multiplayer games my personal preference is Contractors, which sits in between Onward and Pavlov. It allows some time to react to getting shot, but you still have to be more tactical because if you run and gun you won't last long. Once you've emptied your gun that you're using, you're going to need to reload, so let's look in more depth on how each game handles reloading and hand interaction with the weapons. Lots of developers have handled reloading in different ways, with some like Vertigo Remastered choosing not to have reloads at all. This is the same with Robo Recall or Super Hot VR. With Super Hot VR, when the gun is empty you can throw it and use it as a weapon, then you need to grab a new one. This is the same for Robo Recall, but when you throw your guns, new ones spawn on your holsters for you to grab. If you throw your gun at an enemy and catch it when it bounces back, it actually reloads the gun which is very cool. Some games have a very simple reloading, like Arctica 1 or Pistol Whip, where you simply lower the gun down and bring it back up again. It works great with Pistol Whip because of how the game is built around this, with very fast paced shooting, but I would personally would have preferred manual reload and free locomotion for Arctica 1. Manual reloading is the most popular though. This is where you have to eject the magazine, then grab a new one, insert it into the gun, then rack a slide if the gun is empty. The most realistic guns in VR a hot dog's horseshoes and hand grenades, which is a gun simulator that released in Early Access way back in 2016, and it has hundreds of different real world guns to play with. This game actually doesn't have hands. You see your in-game controllers, and you can grab and interact with both the grip and the trigger buttons. Because this is a gun simulator, the guns are very realistic, and you have to interact with them like you would in real life, even down to folding up the gun stocks, or iron sights. The guns actually have collision, unlike most other games in this video, so your magazines won't go through the gun. You have to be very accurate when slotting it in. Pistols mags will suck up into the bottom of the gun when you get them within a certain range, but two-handed stuff like assault rifles require more precision. If the magazine isn't completely lined up, it won't go in. Because it's a realistic simulator, you'll need to rack a slide, and because you can either use the grip or the trigger for anything, sometimes I'll grab the wrong part of the gun by mistake. When it comes to 100 reloads and hand interaction, Half-Life Alex is the best. They've put a lot of effort into the details. For example, when you reload a magazine with the pistol, they have you grabbing the bottom of the magazine, then when you get in within a certain range, it will finish the reload with a fast, snappy animation. You don't actually notice this, because when you're reloading normally, the animation is following what your hand is doing anyway, and if you two-hand the pistol, your hand will sit under the gun making everything feel smooth with no jank. They also do this with the shotgun, and having to grab the shell over the shoulder to bring it down from the top is great game design with your hand naturally coming down from above, making the reload feel very fluid with no friction. They also have different ways to rack a slide with the pistol, which was probably from discovering through playtesting that different people handle the guns differently. So you can grab it from the back, from the front, and your hands will animate as you move them closer to the gun, so when you grab it, it doesn't just snap onto the gun, which can look unnatural. The shotgun can be flicked back up from the top, pushing it up from the bottom, or you can simply flip your wrist to close a loader. I also like the way they handle two-hand and one-handed weapons, by using a proximity system. So as you bring your hand close to the bottom of the gun, your hand will automatically move into place without you having to press or hold a grip button. Some games have tried this, and they've got it wrong, like the Walking Dead Onslaught. The threshold for removing your hand from the gun is set way too high, so your hands feel very sticky. They also use this for two-handed weapons, which is just bad, because again, you end up with this weird sticky hand situation where your in-game hands don't do what you want them to. When handling two-handed weapons, 
you want to use grip to grab or toggle with the option for both so the player can choose. With Onward, when you offer the magazine near the bottom of the gun, it automatically moves into place. When racking a slide, your hand doesn't actually grab the gun. They don't actually seem to have hand poses set for these interactions. When you're in the heat of battle, you're not going to really notice it, but it could be improved. Pavlov recently had an update with some slick looking reload animations. The pistols are okay, it works by you bringing the magazine near the bottom of the pistol, then the animation finishes out the reload. I would prefer it if they adjust the hand position so you're holding the bottom of the magazine like with Half-Life Alex. With some more tweaking, it could be great. They only have one hand position for racking the slide and no animation when you bring your hand near so it snaps. The assault rifles are much better though, with the ability to knock out the old mags on certain guns and then a nice animation which you control with your hand so it doesn't do the reload for you, it moves the mag into the gun and your hand movement just clicks it into place. Again, I'm not a fan of the way the hand and fingers are positioned with some of the hand poses, because if it doesn't match up with my own hand, it breaks immersion. But it's much better than the pistol, and even better than the magazine just snapping into the gun like it does in some other games. Contractors has good hand position when holding the magazine, but doesn't have any animations. When you get it to a certain range, the mag just snaps into the gun. They do have multiple hand positions for pistol slide racking, although again, no animations so the hands just snap onto the gun, but the hand poses are good, and overall the gun handling is satisfying. Population 1 has a very simplified manual reloading. With a magazine floating beneath your gun, you grab it and push it up and then you have to rack a slide but the hands don't actually connect with the magazine or the gun. You end up grabbing thin air and then miming the motion. I'm not personally a fan of this but I understand why they did it because they wanted it to be easy for new people. Zero Calibre has weird hand position on the index controls for pistols but it's fine for other guns. It all snaps into the gun like others with no animations, although they do at least have different hand poses when handling certain parts of the gun, like racking a slide. Boneworks is one of the only games in this video, other than Half-Life Alex, to use full collisions with your hands and weapons. This can be good for messing around with the environment, like flipping over tables, but it can cause jank when manipulating guns. You can't actually eject magazines in Boneworks, which I find odd. With the pistols, you have to either grab under the gun, and the magazine will appear in your hand. You then grab a new one, and when you bring it up to the bottom of the pistol near a certain point, the magazine flies out of your hand into the gun. The other way is to grab a new mag, then bring it up to the bottom, and the old magazine automatically flies out. It works fine for the most part, but sometimes the two mags collide and get stuck. Reloading the carbine is better. You grab the old magazine, then pull it out, grab a new one and slot it in. You can also whack the old one out sideways, which I'm pretty sure isn't possible in real life. The pistols have two hand positions for racking a slide at the front or back, although the front position looks unnatural with the way that your in-game arm bends at the wrist. There are no transition animations for any of the interactions, and because it's all physics based when you grab or manipulate the guns, there's sometimes this weird movement of your main hand that's holding the gun. If you hold the carbine rifle and then push it with your off hand, you can make it move around really unnaturally. With Half-Life Alex, if you try to push the weapons with the other hand, the weapon doesn't move. One thing I would like to see more of, is developers designing guns around VR and its limitations. Trying to use real life guns and have your virtual hands interact with them, isn't ideal because of how intricate the hand movement needs to be in real life. A few games have decided to make fictional guns that make good use of VR and work within these limitations. Like in Defector, you have an energy pistol, which has a power cell that you load into the side. When you eject the cell, the gun opens up, popping the power cell out. You then grab a new one and throw it in through the side. They have the cell pop into place when your hand gets close enough and then you move your hand to finish the reload. When you do this at full speed, it feels really nice and fluid and it's very satisfying. Half-Life Alex did something similar with the SMG. It uses a power cell like the gun and defector, but has its own holder that you hold. You then bring your hand into the side and it loads into the gun with your hand automatically dropping it. It feels perfect with no jank or clunkiness, and you're never fumbling around struggling to reload when the heat of battle. Another example of this is from Vertical Remastered. It has a two-handed gun which is fully automatic, but it has a lever on the side and when you push it forward, it converts it into a more of a sniper, with the gun sights zooming in and the single shots do more damage. The gun can overheat, so you can't just keep blasting non-stop. If we go back to Defector, they have something similar with the semi-auto shotgun for close range, if you pull the lever back that's on the side of the gun, a futuristic scope pops up, turning it into a smart sniper. You aim at your enemy, and once they highlight red, you're locked on and you can fire. 
You don't even have to keep the gun perfectly aimed at them anymore. These weapons that transform feel great to use because they've got that physical element of grabbing a lever and switching between modes dynamically during gunfights. Transforming the gun to your needs and I really wish more developers would go this route and let their creative juices flow rather than focusing on guns needing to be the same as in real life. What about if you want to holster and swap to different guns or weapons? Half-Life Alex uses a more simplistic weapon wheel type system then you move your hand to where the weapon is and let go. It's now magically appeared in your hand. It's pretty foolproof and you understand why they used it as a lot of new VR gamers will be playing Half-Life Alex to the first VR game. Fumbling around and trying to grab a magazine or drop in a weapon when you want to holster it can be pretty frustrating especially in the heat of battle. Population 1 and Vertigo Remastered also use this type of system. A lot of the more serious gun VR games use body holster points. These are marked in different ways like with H3VR you've got bubbles that you can put things into. You've got two over the shoulder and the rest on the front. These are flexible but you do have small bubbles that only take things like magazines and larger ones be more suitable to things like pistols. Onward, Contractors and Zero Calibre all use a very similar holster system with everything having a predetermined slot on the front of your body that you can reach out and grab. Pavlov has holster points for two handed guns over your shoulder and then your handguns sit either on the left or right of your body. You have an ammo pouch on either side with infinite ammo. You grab ammo with your trigger and the correct ammo for whatever gun you're holding will spawn into your hand. Boneworks has my favourite holster system. When you holster a gun, it disappears so you don't have stuff floating around obscuring your view. You have holstered for one handed guns on your armpits and two handed weapons go over the shoulder. You also have a holster around the lower back. It works great most of the time, although I do occasionally drop weapons under my smelly pits so I wish the boundaries were a little larger. They have the ammo on a belt on your left or right, you reach in and pull the trigger to grab a magazine. The only issue we have with this is when you bend down, your ammo pouch isn't where you expect it to be, so you have to awkwardly fumble around to figure out where it is. I really like the physicality of grabbing a weapon and putting it away like in Boneworks. I would like to see more use this system. I also think having ammo over your shoulder, like in Half-Life Alex, is the most consistent way of dealing with it, no matter if you're stood or crouched in real life. And again, the physicality of reaching over it and bringing your hand down feels good. One other thing I'd like to see more of in VR shooters is making uses of your offhand whilst holding a gun. The grenades work great in Half-Life Alex, for example because you can activate them with the same hand with a button press and it's another example of designing weapons around VR. Having to put the gun away so you can grab the pin with your other hand to throw and use a grenade can feel finicky especially if holstering a weapon isn't well implemented. I'd also like to see things like being able to manipulate the environment like with Half-Life Felix you can open a car door for cover or with Arctic One, there's actually one, they have movable cover that you can grab. I feel like developers aren't being creative enough for the most part and are just trying to emulate non-VR games which is fine but there is so much more that can be done with VR as a medium with first person shooters. Anyway, that's enough of my ramblings. Let me know if you liked this video and if you didn't then keep it to yourself. Subscribe if you haven't already I've got lots more in-depth videos on VR game design coming up.